of sin. Interesting. This timeout on the selection, we'll see complexity readied up, or actually LMQ's readied up with that loss of ban was the first one, rather. And so over the Gragas once again. We did scary stuff. Yeah, we did just play that clip of Ackerman absolutely running the game yeah. uh, versus CLG, but Nidalee being up, Nidalee's actually very good against Gragas. Now that she can uh, transform into a Cougar at level one, she actually gets a lot of power really early on and can go very, very offensive in the lane, especially against uh, someone who starts out melee here. No matter how much mobility Gragas has, Nidalee's gonna go poke him down early. It's a big pickup for Robert X Lee, getting his Tristana, making sure that he can get to that late game with the team. Kaz yep. can be a menace on Evelyn in the jungle. That's actually a big point that we didn't even introduce again because it's been spanned out so many times against yeah. Complexity, the Tristana. This is by far, um, you know, one of Robert's favorite champions and something that they have had a lot of success on. In a lot of their games <laughs> where they have uh, upset the top teams, it's Robert on Tristana in the late game. More, the big old smile Crack on his up. face. <laughs> <laughs> no name's not feeling. The Brazilian finals uh, yeah. are going on right now. A huge crowd there. Awesome to see that show happening at the size that it is. After just a short amount of time, it was, I believe I am Sao Paulo, there was, the crowd was one of the loudest I heard, but they're loud everywhere. Remember All Stars. Yeah, our the NALCS loud. crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Gogma locked in. So they say late game, you want some late game? We'll bring it to late game. Braum locked in for the safety on that, and Complexity will now teeter-totter on what they decide to pick up. <laughs> yeah, and they combo this Kog'Maw with the Braum, so that lane is uh, actually fairly strong, and it could go up against the Tristana lane, <laughs> even though we've seen so many, so many Tristana players just smashing their lane, uh, shoving it in early, and using that great base damage. Yeah. the explosive shot active to harass really early. There's a Robert. silent cheer for Victor in the back <laughs> and Jack. <laughs> Robert's been a uh, a really big proponent of the early static shiv as well. Yeah, get a quick avarice, um, just getting gold and then shiv it out. So I really like this Tristana for complexity because it does give them that power of shoving lanes really early and trying to get the um, the early head start that right. they need. Like, like we said, almost in every lane it's going to be necessary. Nidalee picked up with Morgana. There it is safety. Is. Safety for the carry or safety for a diver with Black Shield. No name on Rengar. Possible pickup. Yeah, I want to go over these complexity pickups, though, because uh, they're very good answers to what LMQ took in their first and second rounds of, of picks. The Morgana is always the pretty much the premier answer against Braum. Yep. Because you don't want to go with something like Nami, uh, who gets her entire ult negated by a regular spell from Braum. Morgana pretty much does the exact same thing to Braum though and can negate a lot of his CC with her black shield. And Nidalee, as we said, pretty much the only one who can uh, handle Gragas in the top lane. We'll see, it looks like Complexity uh, are going to take the standard lane wow. phase here as well. LMQ saying, yeah, we'll take that Gragas in the top lane again, but let's switch it up. Let's run Zareth for the first time mm -hmm. in mid, and let's put No Name on Rengar for the first time in the jungle. I like that. At least that. in the LCS. I do like that combo specifically against Complexity, because so much of Complexity's team in the late game revolves around uh, Robert X Lee on the Tristana. If you have right. Rengar and you have Zareth, and you have uh, Gragas, like, that's a lot of damage that yeah. you can get very far back into the Complexity line. No matter where Robert is, he's always going to have to be worrying about Rengar, Xerath ults coming in, even Kog'Maw ultimates in. Yeah. So they have a lot of long-range damage that they can do uh, to it's, take it's, out Robert it's and nicely combined. sort of circumvent the rest of the team and it's get around It's nicely combined line. with a little bit of that dive, too, after they get the poke that they want, that long-range damage. You have a Rengar and a Gragas body slamming into the fight. So Complexity's answer is add more shields. Yeah. You get more damage <laughs> onto Robert, then we will add more shields for him. Orianna plus Morgana here. Pretty good uh, defensive combo to try and protect that Tristana. Nidalee as well, if she's actually with the rest of the team and not split pushing, can even add the heal and attack speed buff for Trist. 
So LMQ coming into this game with loss of a ban in the beginning actually ends up picking two new champions we haven't seen come out of the LCS pools of both Xiao Wei Xiao and No Name. So it'll be interesting to see actually how No Name, who likes to be aggressive and calls the shots, kind of has to play on a Rengar who more or less waits the six before he really makes those engagements. While the team's low down to the rift, let's see how you've been voting. According to LOLesports.com, 76% of you think LMQ are going to be taking the W. And as always, if you start to second guess your vote, then you can continue to update it by tweeting hashtag LMQ win or COL win. And uh, extra add in that at LL Esports just so we can see it. So how will we feel Kaz will be playing against that Rengar? Do we think he's going to find no name? Do we think he'll try to kind of put a uh, stick in his spokes in the beginning of this game and slow down the <laughs> six? I mean, that's always a good plan against Rengar, especially if you're Evelyn. Yeah. Uh, because if you can find him at a camp and using his abilities on the camp, then it's very easy to bully him out of lane. Both of the junglers are probably going to be looking for those early wards, though. Kez's focus is always on vision. Mm -hmm. And Evelyn is actually one of the best champions uh, for a jungler to get early deep vision because she can walk right past your opponent's wards to place her own. Right. Uh, so that's why we see a lot of the best Evelyn's doing, investing in those uh, vision wards and getting that down really early. Because if you get them down deep, you can see where Rengar's going yeah. to ult. And yes, Rengar ganks are really annoying post six, but if you have the deep vision, you can see when he starts it off and just back off. And then he feels like garbage if he just wastes his entire ult. It's always awesome to create those high-value, low-risk situations for yourself early in the game. That's what Complexity likes to try and get their advantage. And we'll see if LMQ allows that to happen here. LMQ, however, bringing out a pretty ferocious composition of their own. It looks like we got the AD carries looking for late game. We'll see how the lanes go. We have, remember, Keds, uh, one of our junglers to watch coming in on this week. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Thank you. I don't think I've ever thanked her for that. No. Actually, she's... <laughs> every single game, she's so nice. It's consistency. Welcome back. Well, yeah. <laughs> so line of scrimmage start here for both teams. Doesn't look like uh, the early invade. We're especially starting with those traps. The traps do a large amount of percentage health damage. And now as well. So it's always very nice uh, to set those up very early as you get to regenerate early on. <laughs> Ackerman on Gracchus, though. Mm. Busted moves. <laughs> oh, no! no. <laughs> huh. Composure. Huh. It's just Braum playing with his puppy, okay? That's his pet. Little did you know, Kogma is Brahms. Man's best Loyal friend. Loyal dog. Man's best friend. Void okay. dog. It's a void puppy. Puppy. He's still young, innocent. <laughs> All right, moving out to the buffs. Looks like it's going to be a standard start. Nothing wrong has happened just yet. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Biscuit starts, Spell Thief over to Relic. A little bit of gold generation on both sides, but we'll see if Bubba Dub tries to get himself aggressive. He's always trying to hit early dark bindings. At least start off Robert with a safer lane by putting the aggression down first. Yeah, we also want to note that the deep board on the blue buff there for uh, <laughs> for complexity. Ackerman back to his old ways because he doesn't want to get that early poke and talked about from Nidalee early. Uh, but yeah, the deep ward on that blue buff. Ooh, Braum passive proc on both members here already. Talked about the power of Kogma and Braum in lane. They get a nice early jump here. When Tristan is not yep. able to push this Braum lane in, then that's a pretty big win for LMQ. Because Tristana has great pushing power. And that's one of Braum's weaknesses. Ooh. If you can get under the turret, it's going to be even harder for Robert X Lee. You can see him cautiously auto-attacking constantly help to keep that lane push. Yeah, the early CS is always a little difficult with Tristana just because yeah. the explosive shot sometimes uh, it puts you in a less than ideal situation with the minion health and you lose a couple, but it's even worse under the turret. We do have to mention though, um, over there when we are taking a look at Kez, uh, he was trying to get the small minions for that red buff in a line so his Q will hit all three at the same time. Uh, but he did fumble it a little bit. He's making moves. Yeah, well, These are the early wards we were talking yeah, this about. Is, this high, is the high value, low risk. Can't be seen. 
Complexity, wow, with the vote. 62 to 38. That was a 70% vote, I believe, for LMQ coming into this game. Let's see yeah. how that happens in mid lane. Probably working the mana bar very well here. Yeah, it's actually get... something that's very important against <laughs> Zareth. Wow, wow. If you can use Orianna to zone Zareth from getting his auto attacks down, one of the biggest points of playing Zareth is making sure you get your auto attack every time your passive is up. Because if you don't, then you do have mana problems. Um, so you'll see really strong Zareth players. They'll always find some way to get their uh, passive proc <laughs> off. Uh, auto attacking, hopefully a champion, but uh, minions work as well. Every time it's off cooldown. But if you can zone him like this, like Prawley's doing, then you can get him to have some mana problems early on. All right, so we'll see what Shao Wei Shao can continue to do here against Prawley in the mid lane. CS quite even. But Prawley's not going to be seeing any ganks from Kez, so he has to keep that for himself. Kez is going to be keeping No Name down, or at least being as sure that he's as big as No Name when he tries to hop out of the jungle the first time. Still that 300 gold lead coming in for complexity. Robert actually and Bubba Dub in a little bit better of a position here with the wards to stay in the face of Vasily, but these guys are still just having a blast, I guess, the bottom lane. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the joke spam is the universal language. No matter what language you speak, everybody knows what Vasily's going for here. Vision from both junglers, heavy priority, as we said. They both have the pink wards, uh, but no name with the early sweeper start. Oh, the flash in! Has a little bit miscommunication there with Prawley. Looks like they will take a little bit of damage on the exit there. But Shao Wei Shao still with the flash in mid now knows he's a bit safer because Kez blew his on that turn. Yeah, and Rengar's doing a good job farming up so far. Already got the Madrids completed. Whoa! Whoa! The burn! It burns! Oh, it's burning! Oh! He goes down! Prawley with the fast first blood! Crawley with the solo first blood. So rarely do we see solo plays being made, but Crawley comes up huge against Xiao Wei Xiao, who right now is actually dropped down. He was the, he's got the second most CS at 10. Keslo coming in for another early action here from uh, Complexity. He's not done. Mm, see so the flash in the top yeah, lane? Yeah, Westrice not able to get that mark onto Ackerman to follow up. That was big, with though. With a long-range pounce. Very nicely done. Kaz blowing the flash in mid, able to blow a flash in the top lane. These are the small advantages that Complexity looks to grab. Can they get it now to Robert X Lee's lane? It's 42 to 39, so pretty even throughout that duo. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this mid lane here because if Prawley can get uh, the large lead early over Xiao Wei Xiao, he can definitely continue with that zoning we were talking about. And when you zone Zareth, you force him to use so much of his mana yeah. on the creeps just to get CS, plus you deny him the auto attacks for his passive. And it takes away so much of the mid lane power that's really important with controlling the early jungle, which both of these teams uh, have been relying on. Deep wards, though, inside the right camp. Right there, yep. Uh, the best thing to do against Evelyn. Kez immediately going to get rid of that, though. Yeah, quick sweeper out. Wow. <laughs> Max Man. range. The length of that stun coming in from Zareth, definitely dependent on the range of it. Probably going to defend his pink ward here, though. Doesn't want to let Xiao Xiao even get back to the minions. He's going to lose out some experience here, too, even though the range was increased. Yeah. If you go all the way around that corner, then you do lose out on the experience. Westrice takes out the pink ward really early. So that opens up Ackerman to more Evelyn ganks. That pink ward tax that we always talk about, hitting LMQ pretty hard early. No name, no one. He can just kind of wait around in the jungle. That six very close for him, as we saw in his experience bar. He's just going through the jungle as he stacked up. Not stacked up, but grabbed that Madrid to get through it a little bit faster. Seven and a half on the clock. Probably his first blood is really the only thing that hasn't been reacted to yet by Xiao Wei Xiao and team. Now level six, no name. We may see a buy before he tries to get a gank out here. Yeah, the other thing you want to look for when you're uh, expecting a Rangar gank is the full ferocity stacked up. <laughs> yeah, he's just going for the check there. Just maybe kinda, but not really. But it's already been taken. Um, yeah, you wanna see Rengar stack up full ferocity in the jungle before he goes for his gank, so he can get off two empowered abilities uh, when he does go for it. So now Complexity has a bit of an idea. Rengar's on the top side, yeah, giving blue it. to Xiao Wei Xiao. They've pinged it out, so this is a bit more control here for Complexity. I don't think they're going to be able to use it. 
But that safety in lane allows them to maybe set something up here. We can see that probably just going back to farm wraiths, make things easy for themselves and try to get a bigger lead. 72 to 66 there. It's not very often we see Xiao Wei Xiao down in CS coming up on the 10 minute mark. Yeah, I mean, I guess there was a little bit of a gank from Kez mm -hmm. early on to right. burn the heal. Uh oh, Vasily gets hit. That's a very nice Soul Shackle. He gets a double lockdown. Bovida puts himself in the right spot. Beautifully done. And Kathy in surprise, no return on damage. Great job by Complexity using that level six all in. <laughs> Robert has been the hero when it comes to Complexity wins. Rengar mid, though. It's going to be a good gank. Probably could have got himself caught out here. The shockwave goes down, but it's not going to be enough to thwart him. Oh, Bump Anther! Open. What a close-in! West Price already with the rotation from top lane. Complexity, three steps ahead. <laughs> oh, Complexity coming up huge in the early game. That should be Dragon for them because they simultaneously got kills bottom and mid. Huge, huge early swing of power here. Now this is a very dangerous gank. Should almost always be a guaranteed kill because Rengar can root his target for the easy long range stun from Zareth. But man, the collapse from Complexity was already in the works. Great flash by Westrice and movement by the team to keep those kills going and both coming in. Now Dragon at 10 minutes over to them. We'll see if LMQ can answer with anything. Complexity getting that early lead, they already extended. Man, the point I was gonna make about that level six uh, all-in bottom from Complexity is that there's a huge boost in power for all-ins for Tristan and Morgana lane when they hit level six, whereas Kogma, his boost in power comes from harass that he'll be able to do in lane with his level six. And so Complexity wastes no time. They jump on literally as soon as they get their level six. Uh, to go for the burst and don't let Kogma poke them down. Because once he gets that level six, he heard Sneaky talk about it. It's so beastly in range. Yeah. The extra harass. It's the ability to apply both Bio Arcane and Living Artillery. But it's not going to be very good if it's going to be a Robert X Lee at 18 first. He'll be able to just walk up and get a few shots in. 91 to 75 CS. Rengar gank Rengar. Number two. In the top lane, Westry is playing very safe. Snare. He already has the alert. He gets out safely. He should be all right. Wait, the ultimate. No, the explosive cast puts him back in range. He's got 300 and just about he 10 health. In he can't get over the wall. The hit comes in. They get the bola. It just misses, actually. He hits him, but not on full charge. The teleport out. Interrupt. One, two, three. Oh, my. Wait a minute. Ackerman. What? Oh, man. That's why when you check bushes, you always attack move the bush. Just action. Never just right click in the bush or else you won't attack your Even more immediately. action. What? Another. Back and forth. Yeah. Missed, <laughs> That's a good Missed trade. kills going down everywhere, but everybody's wanting more, which is cool. The action's not going to be stopping anytime soon. Well, we look, we're looking for all that early action between these two teams. As you said, Complexity of Ben, yeah. a team that goes over and over back to this strong early game, and LFQ have shown so many times that they love playing, playing aggressively in the early game. Great clash between these two. And it's the bottom team that's already looking like they have the advantage here. Complexity though, so many times, even with early leads. Yeah, I the like it. The games kind of drag out really, really long. And these games are gonna be all about damage too, Kobe. Look at the top laners. Got Sheen's coming out over both buys on first. It's gonna be all out war in every lane. I like it. So Ackerman, I'll be very curious to see if he actually rushes the Lich Bane completion uh -huh. or if he goes with a second ability item in between Sheen and Lich Bane. Looks like he is rushing that Lich Bane that has become so common. I really do think that there's value in just going um, Sheen into the uh, Zanyas and then completing Lich Bane because Lich Bane scales really well, but mm. the upfront ability power from it not the biggest gain. So far in lane with a little bit of help that West Rice has gotten, he has capitalized. 101 for himself as well as the Rome mid. Let's see if he can keep it up on Ackerman's Gragas. That has been a scary, scary thing in late game, and that's what both teams are looking for. We still have a long story to go here. 13 minutes in, three, the two and a half thousand gold in favor of complexity. The thing is, yeah, we say like complexity, they always like these late games and they found so many other wins in, in the super late game against top teams, but they shouldn't be looking for that. Right now, they have an early oh, lead. Of course. 
and they should actually work on trying to snowball leads and close games out. That's the he jump. Beat bottom. He still has a flash. He can get over the wall. Actually, his flash is down. They're going to be going on Bubba Dub here, and that's a very nice attack. Kez tries to come in. No name's already on the outside. He sees Whoa. it. The Buster shot backwards, but they may be able to chop down on Kez still. He goes down. No name gets a piece of that as he's forced to walk out after the danger subsides. Minute and 50 on to Dragon. Key there is coordinated aggression from LQ. Yeah. Teleport with Rengar Gank both at the same time. So even though Kez is in the area, they aren't able to ask, answer, and there's just a massacre of wards in the bottom mid. Bush. Hopefully, Westrice can get this turret in the top lane. They only lost kills. They didn't lose Dragon. And he'll be able to create the pressure that might hold Ackerman in a good spot so that Complexity can start to put the pieces in order. Start grabbing buffs now and that Dragon, the second one, if they could get it in their favor. Yeah, even though that was great coordinated move from LMQ, they only got kills out of it. There wasn't, right. there wasn't a tower taken down. There wasn't a Dragon to pick up after this. Teleport used. So Robert jumps out of the way, and Bubba Dub uh, uses the Black Shield on him at the same time. So that's unfortunate for Bubba Dub. He had nothing to save himself. But here's the follow-up. No name, so dangerously close to going down. He also gets a heal from Vasily here which saves his life long enough to get the kill for Dangerous Game as well. Trying to look at the builds. Robert has actually changed his this time, not finishing the Static Shiv. Puts a BF Sword already within that damage, maybe to kind of trade off and max what Kog'Maw can put out at that level 6. 30 on Dragon, and Ackerman's going to be staying up here for the turret. He might be able to walk down after this unless he continues the pressure. Looks like he's going to be heading right so for it. He is able to answer the turret, that it did cost them to go down bottom. However, that teleport's still gonna be on cooldown and Westrice just yeah. came back up. So now Nidalee can be in her element. Nidalee loves to split push. Westrice can stay up there, split push, and then use his teleport advantage to gain some sort of map pressure for Complexity as they posture around Dragon while Nidalee is split pushing. So Complexity will slowly get more and more map pressure if they're able to just Occupy yep. LMQ's time here and poke them and keep up the vision for long enough. Really, they're just trying to buy time for Restrise to slowly uh, increase their lead. That means for LMQ, though, they need to force something. Oh! He body slams him during oh, the rocket jump! What a hit from Ackerman making plays around the map. And Westrice is going to be forced to use his teleport in what looks like the fight has already ended for Complexity. No Name wants to get back in. The Living Artillery, along with the shots from Zareth, not enough. It's just going to leave Westrice about 200 HP for a Primal Surge. He'll heal himself up and be safe with that sustain. Good fight from LMQ. They're posturing yeah. now for that Dragon again. That's the tricky part. When you do have the uh, split push advantage, you really need to rely on your four-man squad to not get caught. And LMQ do a great job of forcing it. They just have so many options to force the issue with complexity. So much CC, and they use the Braum and Gragas to great effect there, earning themselves the dragon, even though complexity had that teleport advantage. And just when you think you can get away, you get two artillery fires falling on your head. Kog'Maw and Zareth. What a composition if you're, if you're trying to escape. Yeah, that's the long range that we were talking about. So much long range damage from LMQ. They're running a team full of snipers. So it's pretty much the worst situation for Complexity, yeah. uh, for their four-man squad. They really have to be on top of the Black Shields and uh, on top of their skill shot dodging abilities if they want to play this game with Nidalee. So just looking around, taking stock of inventories. Cooldown Rengar, no name, puts up the Brutalizer. We'll see a little bit more of that coming into play against the Lizard of Kez. He's had that finish for a while, and he focuses on some magic resistance next. But these two in the top lane, you see the Triforce and the Lich Bane already completed as they start duking it out just a little bit. And here it is, the aggression from West is going to force Ackerman back. Ackerman can only get the advantage if he gets the jump on West Rice gets into melee range. I really do like the change to Gragas, where he's much, he has to actually put himself at risk now to do the large burst. He still has the large burst, but you actually have to get into <laughs> melee right. range to use it. Maybe he needs a couple tweaks, though. He's a little bit strong at the moment. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, Kobe. Maybe the AOE aspect of it needs to be taken down a notch. We'll see, though. Bounce team is on it, I'm sure. <laughs> LMQ soaking up resources on their side of the map. It doesn't look like they have any pressure for complexity at this moment. No wards either. Everything's on their side. 
as they are down 2,000 gold, they haven't really been the one to make the offensive move. That mid lane aggression was kind of just the back and forth of the poke they're able to bring to the table, and then they got the advantage. You see Complexity still trying to get in their jungle and still trying to make advantages. Trying to keep that deep vision down. Bubbed yep. up does get it in the bush, but immediately cleared out by LMQ. They've got three sweepers now and already the scrying orb as well for Xiao and Xiao. I like the pickup here. Usually it's an AD carry to get it, but Xerath can use it as well to go yeah. for those snipes if someone gets into the fog of war and thinks they're safe. We may see uh, Xiao Xiao with one of those long range surprise artillery kills. I'm gonna see. We've seen some good snipes and we've seen some, maybe his eyes were closed snipes. Ah, here goes from the one EU the blue buff again. to the NALCS. Pretty good so far coming from Xiao Wei Xiao. Doesn't have to use the orb that, on that one, and it's that down. One was, uh, that definitely left something to be desired there. <laughs> because, as we said, Complexity have a lot of shields to use. That's true. So, uh, timing's right got to be remembered. Not, you only have a ideal. small window. It's just the all out battle now, Kobe. Nobody wants to go anywhere. It's the mid turret next, it appears. All right, let's see here, because there is no teleport for West Rice, so yeah. they don't really have that option. Even if they wanted to go back to that style um, and and think that they have a better chance of dodging this time, uh, they don't have the teleport. And it's very risky uh, for West Rice to be uh, on his own. Since Vasily's down here, though, he knows his team will not be collapsed on. And Vasily, by the way, on that Kogma, going with the Blade of the Rune King uh, first, actually does help him if he if he was in the situation where he had to 1v1 with West Rice to give him that extra disengage since Nidalee will be closing the gap. Nice shots coming in. Look at the CS here. 201 to 190 in that mid lane right on the backside bubbed up. Looks like he got caught up on some minions. They may have gone for a dark binding there, but the rest of the team just putting and applying a bit more pressure. Item threshold for the 80 carries. Just about an Infinity Edge here for Robert X. Lee. And just about a Static Shiv, possibly, or that Phantom Dancer coming up for Vasily. All right, let's see if uh, Vasily can bait in Westrice and then have a no-name gank come in. Westrice, that always has to be in the back of his mind. Anytime there is Rengar on the team, it makes a split pusher's job much, much more difficult. Scary. This deep ward, though, might... Oh, No Name gets right around the vision of that ward. Sneaky, sneaky No Name. They are doing a really good job of setting up this bait. Vasily looks juicy for Westrice, <laughs> but he's not taking the bait. Westrice has become such... He's been, he's been for a very, very long time, years and years, known as one of the most aggressive uh, top laners, and he would just always split push and not really even care about ganks. He'd just deal with the gank when it showed up, and he'd try and outplay them. Mm -hmm. However, in recent times, he's been playing much, much more safe, and he's been much, much more cautious, and it's really paid off for complexity. Uh, it's turned the team uh, really around, I yeah. think. It's a hard thing to do. Remember him on Akali and yeah. whatnot. Everything he played kind of put him in that aggressive mentality. So. And he knows, yes, I have the power. I could, <laughs> I know I can take this Kog'Maw, but it's not worth the risk That's of right. the Rengar counter gank. Good so patience. he wastes a lot of No Name's time there. Two to one only in turrets with all the commotion we've had in the game. It's really just been each other's throats instead of the structures. The Zanyas will be second coming in for Ackerman. Using the top lane without any pressure right now. He's just having a ball. And he gets another wave to the turret. Top turret's going to be going down for him. Lich Bane assisting in that. We'll see if he can keep it rolling. He is not getting any pressure from what's a teleport to come in from West Rice. Stuck in the bottom lane from Vasily before he gets away. Great pressure in. LMQ now is getting themselves a lead on this one. He's now on the inhibitor turrets. Yeah, let's see what, what's our answer for this with pushing Gragas because he's got a Lich Bane. He's going to take that inhibitor turret down very quick. West Rice is recalling right now, but there is going to be a pretty big chunk out of that top side. Looks like West Rice will get there in time. Yeah, it's not going to be too much damage. That will heal up, but Ackerman now still teleport up. Doesn't look like they'll be able to get there first, but Dragon is definitely a possibility here, and the game could go in their favor after this. Big fight without West Rice could be huge. Yeah, nobody wants to get in a five versus four situation in a game that's this close. There's so much damage on both yeah. teams. Anyone out of position will go down really quickly.
Complexity don't even want to fight this one because they don't have West Rice near. It's the pick potential for both of these teams is actually quite large. LMQ feels like they can take a little bit of ground, and they Man, do. What the complexity? Completely out of sorts here. They no. just give up two objectives and mid. Back yeah. To back. Oh yeah. Right. That's huge. Dragon and two turrets now going in the favor of LMQ. Complexity seems to have been snoozing for a little bit there. Way too complacent with the lead that they had, and they have been taken by storm. Turrets are tied up. Gold is just about the same, and Kez looking to make a play, and this is desperation for Complexity now. Com complexity, what they're looking for is the Evelyn flank into the Orianna Shockwave, but LMQ are very well aware that that is the only really engage from Complexity, their only option. So they're warding up the sides. They have one defensive pink ward over on the Baron side. So they know he's not going to come from that side. But you can see, they all want to spread out. All that LMQ really need to do is make sure they don't clump up. Uh, Xiaoi Xiao and Vasily specifically do not want to stand together for that Evelyn and Ori combo. Very interesting Kez keeps game. looking for it, though. I have to say, even though LMQ have evened up the gold, they haven't gone back to buy after that dragon <laughs> and that mid turret, so uh, they might want to go purchase before they actually pick the fight. Because, yeah, they evened up the gold. Oh, actually, probably sitting on 2,400 gold right now. And Bubba Dub goes well, down. He's sitting on 1,100. Work. Kaz goes down as well. LMQ dances this one out until they get the kills and the fight that they want. Ackerman throws that one just a little bit short. Yeah, how did that, that pick from the side even? That was a Rengar gank, I guess. No name. There's no other yeah, way he would have just yeah. caught Bubba Dub blind like that. Man, takes him down so quickly. That support Morgana has no armor and very little health. Very easy for a damage Rengar to take out since he does have Brutalizer at least. Something that LMQ is really good at capitalizing on. Let's take a look. Oh, more sets it up into the. Ooh. Bye bye. No chance. And then he's in the bush as well, so they get the jump onto Kez. Complexity for the last maybe five minutes just look out of sorts. Yeah. They kind of lost their way here. They didn't have a game plan uh, in these, this around this 20 minute mark. They gave up two objectives, and then they just kind of milled around in the mid lane right. until they got picked off. Not a clear plan for them as far as the mid game goes, and that's a what we've seen so many times from them. Their early game, yeah. methodical. It, it looks great. You know, they get they get the side kills, they get the picks, they get the dragon control, and they seem to come out with these really early leads a lot. But then they always lose it in the mid game, and the game just ends up going extremely long, and they can't they can't really finish or capitalize on any sort of early lead that they've got. We'll see though. They do have Tristana with a two-item power spike here. Shiv plus Infinity Edge now completed. Yep, a little bit of her own sustain. Ackerman's been doing a good job at cleaning back up and finally get these guys back to a split push. If they can even make it happen. Looking for Westrice here, coming out of the base. He still has Teleport up. LMQ feels like they are in the driver's seat now, and rightfully so. They made such a move recently on Complexity. Usually Complexity is the one, like we said, once they get that advantage, the other team kind of puts themselves in a pressure situation. Robert will pick up a few more kills at a Dragon, but LMQ is now avoiding Complexity. Oh, here comes the flank, though. They're looking for it once again. The four-man squad's got to worry. Ackerman, see, LMQ do a good job. They call him right up. They can sense that Kez is coming around the side. They call Ackerman over. This will be a four versus five, actually. Complexity start off the 4v5. There's the Blade of the Rune King. He still has to use oh. it. Kez gets taken down immediately. Vasily with the fast fingers and the help of his teammates on that. Bubba Dub's going to be going down on this. And LMQ, like I said, they are avoiding Complexity until Complexity steps up to the fight. And then they use all of this oh. Oh, to take down the fight. Ackerman still in range, gets the Q slow, and they are going to get another kill over to Vasily. What a great way to fight from LMQ. Well, it was just the difference in, in communication between the two teams. Complexity, West Rice was down bottom, and Ackerman left the lane, but he didn't make the call. And Complexity engaged at 4v5. Ackerman very quick on that Gragas to make his way all the way up mid. And so Ackerman there for the beginning of the fight, while West Rice had to run and follow, made a huge difference. Huge 28-minute Baron. First place LMQ, showing why high-caliber amount of play. 
they're just waiting. They all group so mid, and when they start fighting, they lay down the wards to win the fight, and the rest of it is history. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do get Westmash coming in eventually, but Ackman was there for the beginning. Evelyn saw Kogma. There's a reason that people are picking Kogma so often now. Uh-oh, let's see the flash. Was gonna hit. Um, Kogma, even if people like Twitch or Evelyn open up on Kogma, he deals so much damage if you stand there right next to him and yeah. give him a free Q and E to land on you. That he can just stand toe to toe with a lot of these quote unquote assassins that come up to him invisible. And he he does not run away, especially with this Blade of the Ruined King build where he's got the extra passive that he can activate when somebody pops out on him. Yeah. Don't, a lot of people don't take into consideration the, not that it would be leveled up too much yet, but that passive Q speed definitely takes control in a fight. You already stack Static the, Shift and yeah, Blade on The Shred from the active is, cannot be overstated. It is huge in those 1v1 situations. He's back and looks like he's got some gold to spend, possibly a lot closer to an Infinity Edge or that after a huge kill lead coming in. And that is the Infinity Edge for Kogma. He spikes over Robert actually quite hard here, but we'll see what they have as they go back. See it, haunting guys for probably here in the Orianna build. Very interesting. Yeah, going for that flat spell penetration uh, because he he's really looking for the shockwaves onto priority targets. So if he gets the carries, either Gragas, yeah. Dareth, or Kogma, flat penetration, really, really effective. And he's, he's just banking a lot on the fact that he can get a good shockwave on the priority targets that don't have magic resist. Because that's what Complexity are going to need to turn this game around, honestly. They are in a very, very tough spot. Yeah. It would have to be a really, really good shockwave to turn the game around for them. Well, they're really trying to ward this up, Kobe. They have a lot of the vision necessary to make the moves, but LMQ is just so fast to react every time. It makes it look like it's there's no possible entry. Yeah, LMQ, they haven't spent a lot of money on wards, but look at their hyper carries here. The Kogma's got an extra item over Tristana right now. A whole Blade yeah. of the Rune King lead is massive for LMQ. And the little bit of vision that they do have is covering pretty much everything that they actually need right now. Since Baron's off the map, Dragon's off the map, they don't really have to worry about controlling anything besides blue buff. If they keep that away from Orianna, it allows them to shove in on the turrets. Probably is already wearing it though, so they'll have to wait for a respawn. See how far back complexity stands from that turret. <laughs> it's really where LMQ's composition, ex is, uh, composition excels once they get up to that point. Well, they, they can't also... fight without Robert, definitely. So this uh, is definitely a trade of turrets that they're banking on here. They're hoping that they can wave clear with that Ori, but it hasn't been enough. Yeah. Well, Robert doesn't have any attention just yet. They don't have vision on Ackerman backing, so he may feel a bit scared in that spot. He will see Ackerman in a second. Robert keeps pushing here. Yep. Whew. He knows what happened to double lift. <laughs> Ackerman just throws behind. I've seen this before. Ackerman doesn't want to give up either. Gragas could take this chase. Oh, man. Oh! oh! What? What a oh! throw. Ackerman on the Gragas has been just destroying AD carries left and right. And that was yet another example where he gets to use the teleport to join the team after he gets a kill. Should be a huge win for LMQ here. Yeah, losing your AD carry at that point in the game during the split push, not a good situation here for Complexity, and they're gonna be losing an inhibitor right away. Last shot from Vasily comes in, and that's gonna be 32 on the clock for the first inhibitor. Yeah, and you can see in that gold graph, the huge, huge difference in the mid game there where Complexity kind of stopped making the decisive calls and LMQ just took several uncontested objectives. We'll see if this flank works out though. Evelyn in the back. They've got no power What's left. Oh, he, there's too much to dodge. He has to dive into death in one way or another. Kaz tries suicide. to get himself out. He flashes, definitely a suicide mission. Bump it up's now focused as the kill. LMQ has taken the inhibitor first time and every time they've played complexity and it's only been a matter but of silly. three minutes after for them to win the game. They'll repeat history once again. They'll drop top and hit and they'll be going for the Nexus turrets. Quadra kill for the Kogma. And Vasily just sits in those double turrets after his Quadra kill <laughs> goes down.
but it will be a victory for LMQ and well deserved. Absolutely. Great push on the mid game there. Definitely something for Complexity to go back and look. The falter of the mid game is LMQ made sure to take advantage of that. They run it to 33 minutes, 15 to seven and a 12,000 gold lead at the end from almost nothing. LMQ takes down Complexity in our first game of the week. I think that's one of the first times we've seen a team kind of recoup and figure out what Complexity is doing. How are they just taking our lanes down? But then again, we saw the early game not being a game of objectives. It was a game of champions. And LMQ, they know how to play the champion game. They'll dive you, they'll poke you, they'll kill you. And then they take a mile after getting that inch. They were able to turn that spark on after just one of those mid fights and really take control of the game. Yeah, really well executed, and we will probably never see Ackerman get Gragas again. No. Especially in his current That'd form. That'd be crazy. Even, even with a lost ban. Even with Nidalee laning against him, uh, Westrise is not able to put pressure on Gragas. And, and an uh, early kill on him, or an early flash blowing and, th and then attack. Yeah. Yeah, even with an Evelyn jungle and a Nidalee top lane. Not a kill. Almost the most pressure that you could have in that top lane in a 1v1 matchup. Uh, yeah. Definitely not going to want to be giving away Gragas any longer.